10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jesus loves you too. Hey, it's Mr. Russ. I bet you're wondering what I'm doing here sitting in my truck. It's Sunday morning and I'm not supposed to go anywhere and neither are you. And unless you're going to sit on the couch and watch the live stream with your parents, that's what you should do. But uh, no, I've missed you guys. It's been a couple weeks and uh, I really just wanted to get caught up on what, what we would have been studying had we had Redeemer kids. Last time we were together, we were in the, at the end of the book of Acts and we we're talking about Paul and Paul was under house arrest in Rome. And he had just spent the last two years in prison and then he was shipwrecked. So he had to spend three months in Malta before they could find another ship that could get them all, him all the way to Rome. So why was Paul in prison all that time? Because remember, uh, Governor Festus and King Agrippa said he could be released except for what? That's right. He appealed to Caesar. See, Paul didn't mind being in prison all this time because he wanted the, he knew that the gospel was being furthered. He wanted the gospel to get out. He was talking to leaders. So there was governors and rulers and kings and um, soon the emperor. I mean, there was jailers and the other prisoners. And even the churches were being encouraged by him being in prison. And so Paul didn't care about his life and, and what he had to suffer as long as the gospel was getting out there. What do you think Paul did with all that time? Two years in prison. What, what do you think he did? What, what have you been doing for the last two or three weeks? I hope you've been uh, obeying your parents and doing what they tell you because they want to keep you safe. So they might be telling you, make sure you wash your hands the right way or stay away, keep a, like six feet away from other people and don't touch anything unless you have to. And then if you touch it, wash your hands again. And then don't touch your face, all these things. Um, I hope that you're doing those because I want you to be healthy and I want you to be safe. But what do you think Paul was doing What with all that time? Paul spent all of his time thinking about and praying for the churches that he had planted on his missionary journeys. He really cared about them. He cared about their spiritual well-being. And so he wrote letters to them, letters to teach and, uh, them more about God and, and about Jesus and the gospel and, and to encourage them in the, in the tough times that they were going through. And actually those letters that he wrote to the churches became books of the Bible. Uh, books of the New Testament, uh, a lot of them actually. And then, so if you're looking for things to do, what do you think you could be doing during this time that you have away? Well, hopefully you're doing your schoolwork and doing what your parents tell you to do and looking for ways to help them out. But maybe there's someone else who's on your mind and you can't go see them, but maybe you can give them a phone call or your parents will let you text them or email them. Or maybe you could even just write a letter like Paul did. So one of those churches that, that uh, Paul planted was in the city of Colossae. And we call that book, that letter uh, that he wrote to them, the book of Colossians. And so remember to find the New Testament, this is what we do. We take our Bible and if you open it up halfway, you'll probably be in Psalms or Proverbs. I, I turn to, to Proverbs. And then you're gonna take the back half and you're gonna open it up halfway again, and you should be one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Matthew's the first book in the New Testament. So when I opened it up, I ended up in the book of Luke, okay? And then you're going to open up that last halfway again. So what's that? Seven-eighths of the Bible back. And you should land in one of the books of the Bible that ends in the letters A and S. So if it ends in the letter a n s first and second corinthians galatians ephesians philippians colossians first and second thessalonians those are all letters written to churches um, that paul wrote the corinthians was written to the church in corinth uh, ephesians was written to the the church in ephesus galatians was written to the church in galatia you get it so the way I like to remember the order of some of these letters, I know first and second Corinthians is first, 
is God's Electric Power Company, G-E-P-C. Let's take the first letter, God's Electric Power Company, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So we're going to look up Colossians, if you hadn't already figured that out. And so I opened it up and I'm in Ephesians, so that's E. I needed P, Philippians, and then Colossians. So once you found that, we're going to be in Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to start in verse 15. So right there, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to, you won't see me because I'm going to put up the verses on the screen in case you couldn't find it in your Bible or you didn't have one handy. And we're going to read it together. Okay. I'll see you in a little bit. If you're able, please stand for the reading of the word of God. Colossians 1, starting in verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For everything was created by him in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and by him all things hold together. He is also the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile everything to himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through the blood shed on the cross. All right, so the passage I just read is just part of Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. But what he was trying to teach them is also um, good for you to learn as well, or all of us to learn. It's good theology, and that what theology means is it's just words about God. And he makes three main points in this passage uh, that I want, want us to learn together here today. And the first is that he is the image of the invisible God. Now, can you see God? No, I can't either. Um, those that lived in the same time as Jesus, now they could see God because Jesus said he is the image of God. He said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Next, it says that he was the firstborn over all creation. Let's think back to Genesis. You know, we know that Jesus was born. He's a baby. He's human. And back in the book of Genesis, it says that we were created in the image of God. Now, but Jesus is different than us in that he didn't mess up. He never sinned. He did everything everything that the father asked him to do it says he was obedient to him even unto the cross so if you wanted to know what god would do look at jesus because he said it was his mission to do the will of the father he did everything to glorify the father have you ever um, been told boys that you look like your dad or girls that you look like your mom and, and you took that as a compliment because you love them and you want to be like them and you want to obey them that that's Jesus if you look at Jesus you can see what God is like now Jesus is God he's God the Son but he's a different person but he looks like God the Father The next thing we learn about Jesus is that he was not created. So he's not like us. We were created, but he created everything that there is from the teeny tiniest thing to the biggest, greatest thing you can think of. He created the whole universe. He created things that we can see like grass and trees and mountains, but he also created the invisible things. Can you see air? No, but it's there. It's a good thing it's there because if we couldn't just take a deep breath if there was no air you couldn't do that 
He created that. He knows that we need it. He knows what we need. He created everything that we need. And it says that all things were, were created, not for us, but they were created for him. And then it says it here in verse 17, if you look at it, it says, He is before all things, and by him all things hold together. So we thought, we looked back to creation where he created man and, and woman. See, he was a man. He took on that form. He was born. He took on the form of a man. But that doesn't mean he was created. And it says, by him all things are hold together. You know, he knows how all those little molecules are held together. He knows how that coronavirus gets stuck together. So he could blow it apart if he wanted to. He could... He could protect you from it. He can heal you from it because he knows it, it wouldn't hold together if it wasn't for Jesus. The next verse, verse 18 says, he is also the head of the body, which is the church. You know, we have elders and Pat, well, we call them pastors. There's Pastor Barry and there's Pastor Jeff and there's Pastor Kevin, there's Pastor Brad. But they, they are not the ultimate leader of the church. Jesus is the leader of our church. And in fact, the scripture says that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Every authority that's under man, he put into place. And before he left and went up into heaven, he, he told the disciples, all authority in heaven and on earth, it belongs to him. And he gave it to us to make disciples of all nations. But ultimately, he is the boss. He is our king. In verse 19, we read, For God was pleased to have all the fullness of his fullness dwell in him. This goes back to what we said in the beginning. Jesus is the image of the invisible God. God the Father was pleased to have all of him fill or dwell, live in Jesus. And then verse 20 says, is our last point, and through him to reconcile everything to himself. So reconcile means to bring back together again. So our sin separated us from God the Father. He can't have sin. He's holy anywhere near him so our sin made us enemies with god and jesus it says further down through his blood shed on the cross it takes care of that it covers over our sin so that we can come back together and if we keep reading it says once you were alienated and hostile that means once you were his enemy in your minds expressed in your evil actions but now he being jesus has reconciled you by his physical body through his death, he died on the cross to present you holy, faultless, and blameless before him. The Bible says if we confess our sins, if we believe that Jesus' death on the cross um, saves us from our sins, if we confess those sins to him, he is faithful and just and will forgive us from those sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. I know y'all don't know much about snow, but think about how pure and white snow is. That's how your life can be. The Bible says Jesus puts his righteousness on you if you will put your trust in in him so jesus is our savior he saves us from the penalty of our sin which is death and he gives us life through his resurrection so yeah i'm back in my truck so we've been talking about paul and how he wrote letters in prison and the letter that he wrote to the church in Colossae was to encourage them and to teach them what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. And he wanted to teach them more about who Jesus was. And we said that Jesus was three things. First of all, he is the image of God. Second of all, he is the creator. And lastly, he is our king. Paul encouraged them and Paul made much of Jesus because Jesus is better. I want you to think about the greatest thing you can think of. Jesus is greater. 
He's the boss. He's in charge. He has all authority. He, any authority that we have, the president, um, uh, the judges that we have today, the governor, anyone who's deciding that you have to stay home right now, the doctors, he put them in place. He gave them their knowledge of what they can do and what they can't do. Jesus is better. And he is bigger than the virus and he's bigger than us. And he can keep you safe and he can watch over and protect you if you get sick and he can take care of you. Jesus is the great physician. Jesus can save you. He is the Lord of your salvation. Jesus is better. So let's remember that this week and be encouraged by that. And I will hope to do this again, probably another week or two. Before I leave you guys, I wanted to pray for you. And, and we'll see where we go from there. Let's pray. What do we do when we pray? We show reverence for a holy God. Okay. Jesus, you are better. You are better than we can imagine. You are the image of God. You are our creator. You are our savior. You're our king. God, I pray that we, you would show us through your Holy Spirit how we can be better followers of you, that we would not be ashamed of you um, or your gospel, for it is the power for salvation to all who believe. God, I pray that you would comfort us in this time, that we would not be fearful, but we would put our trust completely in you with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind and all of our strength. God, we love you and we want you to be praised. Help us not to complain. Help us not to worry. But help us to make much of Jesus, I ask, for your sake. Amen. Well, I hope to do this again in another week or two. Maybe we'll see another letter or we'll look at another letter um, that Paul wrote to one of the churches. Until then, uh, y'all stay safe, stay well. Um, I love you guys. Bye.